Hi everyone and welcome back to my second Little Red Tarot unboxing of the day. I have just done an unboxing and walkthrough of the fantastic Naked Heart Tarot and I shall link that below if you haven't already seen it. And um, I know now what this must be because it is the other deck that I ordered in my same Little Red Tarot order. And um, this is a deck that I had actually seen um, beforehand Thank you, Little Red Tarot, for your for delivering to me. There's a note there saying thanks for your order. Um, here we have the other deck that I ordered. Um, I've seen this one before. I've had it on my wish list for a long time. Hadn't quite got around to getting it. And when I ordered Little, when I ordered the Naked Heart Tarot, I thought um, it feels to me as though this kind of goes with it in some way. So I'm going to get it. And um, I wanted to do some work in the area that this deck relates to. It's not a tarot deck, it's an oracle deck. Um, so I thought now is the time because I want to do a bit more work with the Wheel of the Year and this is the Green Wheel Oracle. So again I'm going to clear a bit of space for myself and we'll go into it. So, um, so it says on the front, the Green Wheel Oracle, an oracle for those who walk a path into the heart of the land. 45 Cards and Guidebook by Danielle Barlow. Now, a little bit of background to it. Again, I like to give background before I dig into these things. So, on Little Red Tarot's um, website, it says, Danielle Barlow's Oracle Deck is a wonderful tool for exploring and honouring Celtic traditions and symbolism. Its 45 watercolour illustrations range across 13 moons, the Wheel of the Year festivals, and a wonderful collection of animal and plant allies, all inspired by Danielle's home of Dartmoor, southern England, and ancient Celtic traditions. A small guidebook offers further interpretive notes. Perfect for daily draws, journaling, or altar or spell work, or for deepening your connection to the land, seasons, and lunar cycles. And there's a quote here from Daniel Barlow. I have spent the last five years creating the Greenvale Oracle deck, a set of 45 cards from my paintings. This is a set of divination cards that can be used in several ways, to offer insights into situations, to suggest new ways of looking at things, and also to help you journey deeper into an awareness of the rhythms of the land and the skies. These are large cards that feel good in the hands, presented with a drawstring bag and in a lovely, sturdy, recycled keepsake box. The deck is divided into three sets, the eight wheel cards, which follow the wheel of the year and mark the eight Celtic festivals of Imbolc, Spring Equinox, Beltane, Midsummer, Lammas, Autumn Equinox, Salmon, or Samhain, and Midwinter. The 13 moon cards, representing the 13 lunar months of the year, and 24 companion cards, depicting animal and plant allies. So, without further ado... Let's go in. Oh, actually, maybe there is a bit more to do, and that is, <laughs> that is to say a little bit about what um, Danielle says on her website. So she says, The Greenville Oracle is my love song to this wild and fragile earth on which we live, to its precious, delicate beauty, and to its raw and brutal power. This land from which we are born, that feeds and nurtures us, and to which we eventually return, is as much a part of us as we are of it. Um... So opening the box, what I see immediately is the book. And this book is 60 pages long and it seems to have um, a page per um, card and also some information on how to work with the oracle, um, including a green wheel spread, which we might come to shortly. <gasps> wow. And there is the aforementioned drawstring bag which will be very handy and then we have the cards wow 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 so i don't know if these are in any particular order interesting because not all of them have got something on saying what they are so i presume you go just by what they look like and find them in the book but isn't that gorgeous so let me see if I can find that in the book so that we are aware. Okay, so yeah, so this is Imolk, the Maiden. The Maiden offers sanctuary and deep peace. And the threads that relate to this are divine love, soul healing, embodied being, and understanding of your position in relation to everything else, the sea and song. Isn't that wonderful? 
Then we have Spring Equinox, The Magician. The Magician offers infinite possibilities. Threads here are magic, the universe, union of masculine and feminine, soul choices and looking within. Then we have the Lady, which relates to Beltane, representing sovereignty and service. I'm not going to read everything that's in the guidebook because I don't want to basically read the entire thing. If you want this deck, I'm going to recommend that you get it because it's gorgeous. And here we have Midsummer. This is the Fool. The Fool offers an opportunity to alter the course of events. Um, then we have Lamas, the Seeker. The Seeker offers you a quest. She brings hardship and wisdom. Made lovely cards. Wow. By the way, the um, card stock is kind of... Um, it's almost like a linen-y finish. It's got that kind of slightly rough um, feeling, which I like very much, but not overly, um, not, not overly stiff. So really nice quality cardstock, almost like an, an art print, in fact. Then we have the Lord. This is Autumn Equinox, offering truth, but he asks you to bring pa compassion and integrity. And then we have Sauron. The gatekeepers for Samhain, holding the lore of the land and guarding the sacred earth. And then we have Midwinter, and that's, um, oh, sorry, I turned the wrong page. The hunter, the hunter bringing anarchy and chaos, followed by regeneration. And the threads here are endings, renewals, cycles, immense time frames. So those are the, the cards relating to the festivals, and then we go into the cards which relate to the moons, and I'm going to give you, um, I'll show you the cards, I'll give you um, uh, a couple of uh, indications of what's in the guidebook, but not all of them. So there we have the quiet moon, the rising moon, the traveller's moon, so let's just see what it says here about the Traveller's Moon to give you an idea of what's in the book. So the Traveller's Moon, um, the Traveller's Moon represents journeys and travel, both literal and metaphorical. It's about questing, seeking knowledge and the transformation that occurs within the journey. Threads are journeying, learning, transformation, protection, boundaries and defence, fecundity. Um, and then it gives information on the journey through the, the, the year. The tree that this relates to is the Rowan. And it says, spring cleaning inside and out. Gather the first new growth of wild herbs to eat for cleansing the body and bringing clarity of mind. Nettles with their fierce vitality are particularly good. Renew protective charm before starting new journeys in the year ahead. Make small rowan crosses bound with red yarn as travelling charms. And polish horse brasses if you have them or the modern equivalent for your car. And then for ceremony, cleaning and clearing, followed by setting your boundaries clearly, whether it be casting a circle, calling on a deity, or any method that feels comfortable to you. So clearly in each of these moons there are um, symbolic representations and then some uh, ideas about how to honour that moon. So I could imagine, um, for example, that you could cycle through these cards, maybe have them on your altar, for each of the moons as you go through the Wheel of the Year, along with, of course, um, the cards relating to which festival you're closest to. And you could then follow along and, and develop practices. It's one of the reasons I wanted to get this deck, actually, to um, give myself the option of a simple Wheel of the Year practice that I could observe, um, and also some lovely art to look at. So that's the Traveller's Moon. Then we have the Birthing Moon. Potent moon, the water moon, the spiral moon. I think I'm going to read a bit about what we have in the spiral moon, just so again you can get a sense of it. So the spiral moon is the card of sensual love. It speaks of intoxicating passion and deep tenderness, and also of pain and the rawness of grief. It contains the call to deepen connections to yourself or others through a process of peeling back the layers and spiralling to the heart of things. And the threads are love, 
grief, connection, renewal, divination, clarity of sight. Journeying through the, the year, the tree that this relates to is the honeysuckle. And the instructions are walk in the dark, learn the sounds of the night and make an opportunity to stay out overnight. This is the perfect time for stargazing and learning to navigate by the night sky. Construct a labyrinth or spiral on the ground or a sheet to carry outdoors. Make it large enough that you can walk it physically. And then the ceremony recommended is walk or dance the spiral inwards, reaching the heart of yourself at the centre. Once at the centre, practice scrying, asking what you need to honour at your centre and soul before walking out and integrating this. Isn't that lovely? Now, I just want to check. Um, yeah, so it does give you a sense of when everything falls. So, for example, the spiral moon uh, falls in June or July. And it says that, you know, for the, the wheel card, which was the eight that I showed you to start with, it says the wheel cards are eight cards which follow the sun cycle and represent the eight Celtic festival, festivals of the year. The moon cards are 13 cards following the lunar cycle and represent the lunar months of the year. There are 12 full moon cycles in each year and a 13th full moon approximately every three years. In my practice, the new year begins as the year turns around its pivot point in the darkest days of winter. The first moon, the quiet moon, is the first full moon to fall after midwinter. So I know that some people see... Um, the new year beginning at Samhain. So, um, you know, that's kind of, uh, it's worth being aware of the, the sequence that's being followed here. So quiet moon is December, January, rising moon, January, February, traveler's moon, February, March, birthing moon, March and April, potent moon, April, May, water moon, May, June, spiral moon, June and July. And then we have the weaver's moon, which is July and August. Oops, sorry, that was a bit quick, wasn't it? Weaver's moon. Harvest Moon, which is August and September. The Hearth Moon, which is September and October. The Blood Moon, which is October and November. The Cold Moon, which is November and December. And then we have this card, the Singing Moon, which relates specifically to October, which I'm going to presume is the extra um, one that she refers to. Yes, the Singing Moon is a rare gift only occurring every three years or so. It is a window of time where you can bring about radical change if you want to. This is a good time to completely rethink plans, take chances and grasp new opportunities. It comes with a warning though, if you choose to throw the dice, you cannot predict the outcome and the changes are likely to be far reaching. And the threads here are change, good luck, community involvement, sacred activism and journeying through the year, the tree that this relates to is elder. This is the perfect time to bring about change. Spend time asking where the land and its inhabitants most need your help and skills. This is a time where communities can work and celebrate together. So reach out, get involved and make connections to your community. Ceremony, plant the seeds of the change you wish to see happen. So that's lovely. Um, and then we're moving on now to the allies. Now I should show you before I do that, the backs of the cards of this rather lovely image. Isn't that nice? Very nice. So. Then we have Badger, and just to give you an idea of the information given here, um, Badger, the quote is, return to the earth. Badger is the link between our world and that of the ancestors. This card can indicate strong family ties and issues from the past resurfacing. It can also warn about becoming stuck in a rut or a repeating cycle and invites you to break free. Despite the strong family links, the Badger path is often a solitary one. There is a deep connection to the earth here and a need to be grounded. The threads it relates to are psychopomp, death, ancestral lines, caring for others, custodianship and courage. We're going on with the animal allies. We have the boar. The cow. I'm trying to catch the light so you see as much of this as possible. Lovely clover there. The deer, fox, I love foxes, and again I love the art in this deck. 
and then we have the gold. Oh, that's interesting. That seems to be reversible. So my curiosity has got the better of me and I want to find out why the goat is reversible. Ha! Huh. It's reversible because the quote it relates to is change of perspective. And one of the threads it relates to is reversal. Reversals, tricky situations, determination. Goat is a trickster, often flipping the status quo on its head. This card suggests that things need to be turned upside down. Sometimes you need to take an entirely different path in order to reach your destination. Goat brings your qualities of resilience to the fore, but also offers a reminder to look carefully and make sure you can tell the difference between determination and blind stubbornness. I think I needed to pull that today. Goose. Hair. I don't know if you can see very clearly there in the light, but there's a lovely little tower at the top of that hill for the hair. Honeybee. Magpie. Beautiful art. They would look great on an altar or just, you know, propped up on a mantelpiece. Owl. Pony. Raven. Robin. Salmon. Seal. I'm getting very alliterative here. We have a snake and spider. All the S's. And you can see, well, I hope you can see, a very intricate web drawn there. Lovely. Almost three dimensional. And we have the toad, the weasel. Wild cat, the wolf, the wood mouse, and the wren. And of course, you probably are noticing that there are plants on each of these cards as well. So um, the plant allies come along with the animal allies. So um, you know, when it talks about what, uh, so for example, Wren, it says here, Wren calls for you to have confidence in yourself. Hawthorne and Wren suggest the need for you to open your heart fully and give everything of yourself, trusting that it will be all right. Lay aside self-doubt and allow the person you want to be to step forward. Hawthorne energy can help us to open our hearts and to give, and to both give and receive love more freely. Love yourself and let your voice be heard. Threads are trust and self-esteem, open-heartedness and joy. So this Oracle deck, I think, as well as going marvelously with my new Naked Heart Tarot, I'll light up a bit, um, I think would also go really well with something like the Herbal Tarot. Um, uh, so I think this is lovely. I'm really looking forward to working with this. I'm looking forward to propping these up. The, thing, the way I'm going to use it, in fact, is I am going to make a space either on my altar or, um, uh, elsewhere where I can prop up the Wheel of the Year cards and the Moon cards and then maybe a daily draw of the Ally cards. So that would be a great way of using this deck and keeping it very kind of present and in your in your sight all the time. Nice simple book um, and uh, very well put together. Some nice uh, information about how to use the deck and really easy and clear information. And again it's a lovely kind of quality cover back of the book says blessed sanctuary i will hold this land i will honor it spirit guide my hand so a really really nice oracle deck that is the green wheel oracle by daniel danielle barlow and i hope you've enjoyed this i've certainly enjoyed showing it to you 
And um, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more from this channel, of course, please remember to subscribe, give the video a like, and if you click the bell icon below, then you'll get a notification when a new video appears. And a new video appear to, should appear fairly soon because I'm nearly up to video, um, to, well, to number nine in my Tarot to the Nines video series, which means that we will, by the time we've done number nine, we will have covered almost every single deck in the, in the um, every single card in the deck. I will, however, need to do a video on the elusive court cards. And I've also got some videos to do on various uh, recommendations for tarot, enneagram, numerology, and mythological resources that underpin the Tarot to the Nines series. So, um, if you'd like to know more, I'll put a link below to the series so that you can explore it further. And until the next time, take care of yourselves. I will see you again very soon.